Good evening. I welcome you all to this meeting of the Cadenia Shire Council and now declare the meeting open. Please note that this meeting is being webcast live over the internet on Council's website. Before proceeding to the business before us, can I ask for a motion to close the meeting to the members of the public due to the health and safety concerns associated with COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, Councillor Letitia Wilmer, and a seconder, please. Councillor Michael Schilling. Um, Councillors, we'll put that to a vote. Uh, all those in favour? I declare that carried. Thank you. We will commence the meeting with the following prayer. Almighty God, we humbly request that you bestow your blessings upon this council, direct and prosper our deliberations to the advancement of your glory and to the betterment of the peoples of Gdynia Shire. Amen. The Kadinia Shire Council respectfully acknowledges that we are on the traditional land of the Bunurong and the Wurundjeri people and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Tonight we have received an apology from Councillor Jody Owen who is suffering from flu-like symptoms and therefore um, our safety will not be, as out of our safety will not be in attendance. Uh, we also have an apology from Councillor Brown as he is feeling unwell. Uh, the Queen's birthday honours. I'd like to take this opportunity um, right now to recognise our local residents who were acknowledged in the recent Queen's birthday honours by receiving an Order of Australia medal. Former councillor uh, and mayor George Blankhorn was recognised for his service to the Cadinia community over the past 43 years. George was a councillor for eight years, serving as mayor, and has been heavily involved in the Pakenham Rotary Club and many other ca uh, local clubs and groups. Joyce Mills was recognised for her service to the Kuirup community, in particular being involved in the Ladies' Auxiliary for the Regional Health Service for an amazing 37 years. Joyce has also uh, been heavily involved with the Girl Guides, as well as many other groups in both Kui Rup and uh, Lang Lang. Peter Crawford from Emerald was recognized for his service to the Anglican Church and the Emerald community and the wider Dainong Rangers. Dr. Crawford was appointed uh, as priest in charge of Emerald and Cockatoo in 1981. Dr. Crawford was an inspirational in the efforts of the Emerald uh, Community Hope and Outreach Program, uh, which is ECHO, um, and assisted many local families and was also heavily involved in the Emerald Emergency Planning Group, being particularly active in the aftermath of the Ash Wednesday fires. Uh, council is fortunate to have so many local residents that give tirelessly to volunteering in their local communities, and I congratulate George, Joyce, and Peter on receiving their Order of Australia medals. And I'm sure all of us councillors uh, will support me in uh, congratulating these worthy recipients, so thank you. Minutes of previous meetings. Uh, can I please have a motion to adopt the minutes of the meetings as listed? Uh, Councillor Graham Moore. And a seconder, please. Councillor Letitia Wilmot. Uh, Councillors, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? I can declare that carried. Thank you. Uh, declarations of interest. Councillors, uh, do you have any declarations of interest to announce? Uh, there being none, we'll continue to ordinary business. <clears throat> the Council conducts its meetings according to a consent agenda. Councillors have advised of the matters for consideration this evening that they wish to discuss or debate. The remaining items will be adopted without discussion. The items withdrawn for tonight's meetings are as follows. <clears throat> Item 6.1.1, Amendment to Planning Permit 200 Beaconsfield Emerald Road. Withdrawn by Councillor Brett Owen. Uh, Councillor Owen, to move. Thank you, Mayor. I move the following, that the report be deferred to the July Council meeting to allow further consideration of the application. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Do I have a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Letitia Wilmot. I'll go back to Councillor Owen to speak to this item. 
Thank you, Mayor. Very briefly, uh, late this afternoon, councillors were advised that council officers have detected a significant error in the officer's report for this application. The error is the result of the wrong version of the report being uh, inadvertently circulated. Council officers deeply regret th this error, but as such, they have recommended that the decision should be deferred to the July meeting to ensure that the corrected report can be placed before councillors in the chamber prior to a decision. So I move this deferment motion, please. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Councillor Owen. I will now go to Councillor Wilmot to speak to this item. Thank you, Mayor. Nothing further to add. Thank you, Councillor Wilmot. Um, are there any other councillors that would like to speak to this item? There being none, I will go back to Councillor Owen to summarise. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I think it's self-explanatory. Um, we just need, obviously, further information for us to make a decision on this matter. So this will uh, occur at the July Council meeting. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, councillors, I'll put this to a vote. All those in favour? Uh, declare that carried. Thank you. Item 6.1.3. Use and development of a dwelling at Lot 4, Ropers Land, uh, Lane, Coralin. Uh, withdrawn by Councillor Moore. Councillor Moore, I understand you wish to have this uh, matter deferred? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, yes, um, I'd like to move that this report be deferred to the July uh, Council meeting to allow consideration for additional information be lodged by the being lodged by the applicant. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, can I have a seconder, please, Councillors? Uh, Councillor Ross. Uh, Councillor Moore, would you like to speak to this item? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just, um, just slightly, um, the um, applicant has submitted uh, more information um, into this application uh, to, to give the planners a bit more um, uh, awareness of what's happening at that, at that particular site. So hopefully um, we'll be able to achieve something in the July meeting um, and get something, a, a positive outcome um, at the July meeting. So uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Um, Councillor Ross, I'll go to you to speak. Nothing further, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, Councillors, does anyone else wish to speak to this item? Um, there being none, I will go back to Councillor Moore to summarise. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, no, there's, there's no further to go. Uh, this is the second time this item has been deferred, so um, hopefully we'll get it right this time in, in July. and. Um, We'll, we'll pull it all together in the July meeting and it'll be nice to see this, um, this item finalised eventually after at least 10 years it's been going for. So it'll be nice to see this one way or the other. But uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. All right. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Um, Councillors, we'll put this to a vote. All those in favour? I declare that carried. Thank you. <coughs> item 6.1.4. Report in respect to uh, in respect of planning permit amendment 400 Mountain Road, Gembrook. Withdrawn by Councillor Wilmot. Uh, Councillor Wilmot, uh, I, I'm told you wish to defer this matter. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, July is looking like a busy meeting, um, but I'd like to move that we defer this report to the July meeting so that we can allow further consultation with the parties involved. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilmot. Uh, do I have a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Ross. Uh, Councillor Wilmot, would you like to speak to this item? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, this report came about through a resolution that was made in the May meeting, um, and the staff have done a sensational job of pulling together a lot of the information in a very short period of time. And this is this deferral is by no means a criticism of the work they've done. They've they've put in a lot of effort, um, and it's a pretty reasonable report. Um, however, over the last couple of days, uh, certainly ward councillors have had a lot of correspondence from some of the parties involved in this. And um, I know that the mayor and certainly myself have spoken to several of the members involved today. Um, and it became very apparent that the best course of action here was to defer this item so that some more work can be done and some more conversations can be held. So that's the intention from tonight, is that we wait until July and we have some further conversations with all involved. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilmot. Uh, we'll go to Councillor Ross to speak to this item. Nothing further, thanks, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, uh, any, any other councillors? Uh, Councillor Owen. Yeah, thank you. Just briefly, thank you, Mayor. Um, obviously, I repeat uh, the comments of uh, Councillor Wilmot. Um, 
we probably only got this document as councillors only about 10 days ago, so we need to digest it. Uh, we haven't met since, in sort of, you know, other than uh, this afternoon. We just didn't have a, an opportunity to really go through the report. And as Councillor Wilmot did say, obviously speak to the residents that's uh, providing that sort of feedback. feedback. And, and it's fair to say they probably only got the report at the very earliest last Tuesday, um, at the very earliest, uh, if they got online. So I welcome this deferment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, <clears throat> I'll just add for myself that I also support this deferment. Um, I think it's only going to give us more time to um, to have these discussions, and it's it's well warranted. So I appreciate you moving this, Councillor Wilmot. Thank you. Uh, any other councillors would like to speak to this item? Uh, there being none, I will go back to Councillor Wilmot to summarise. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for your support, um, gentlemen. This. Um, situation has been going on for a very long time and by deferring for a month is really not going to uh, make a difference one way or the other but uh, I think it would be nice to have that bit of extra time it'll be nice to get this issue off the books once and for all I know that um, it's been a, a thorn in everybody's side for a long time so if we can have some extra conversations that'll be a very good outcome thank you thank you councillor Wilmot uh, I'll put this to a vote all councils in all councillors in favour I declare that carried. Thank you. Item 6.2.1 and 6.2.2. .2, adoption of the 2020-21 budget and council plan and council plan actions. Withdrawn by Councillor Wilmot. Uh, Councillor Wilmot to move this item. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the reports and the recommendations be accepted as written and I won't um, take all your time by reading through the very many points listed under the recommendations, but I will speak to them shortly. Thank you, Councillor Wilmer. And um, do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Schilling, thank you. Um, I'll go back to Councillor Wilmot to speak to this item. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Schilling, for seconding. Councillors, tonight I seek your support to adopt the budget for the 2020 to 2021 budget period the Council Plan and the Council Plan Actions. The Council Plan is prepared with reference to Council's vision. Council determines the key outcomes it would like to achieve, which form the basis of the four-year Council Plan. The Strategic Resource Plan included in the Council Plan summarises the financial and non-financial impacts of the objectives and strategies and determines the sustainability of these objectives and strategies. The annual budget is then framed within the strategic resource plan, taking into account the services and initiatives included in the annual budget, which contribute to achieving the strategic objectives specified in the council plan. The draft budget and the draft council plan and actions have gone through the required period of public consultation and eight submissions were received during this time. A summary of the submissions is included in the report and the responses to those submissions are also included in attachment two. I acknowledge and thank those who made submissions for their time and consideration. And I also note that all submitters will receive written responses once the budget has been adopted. Over the last couple of months, there have been a number of changes to both the council plan and the draft budget. And these are outlined in the recommendations in both reports. The changes in the council plan reflect the budget changes and the changes are also incorporated in the strategic resource plan. Point two in the budget report identifies the projects which will be funded through the federal government's local roads and community infrastructure stimulus funding, which has recently been announced. This funding has made it possible to make changes to project delivery times, as well as reinstate allocations that had previously been cut. Point 20 of the budget recommendation is the council confirms the three phase package of financial assistance grants and rebates to support community and businesses through COVID-19 to the value of 1.6 million. General rates are to increase by the state government's fair go rates system cap of 2% for the financial year. 1.6 million raised via the 2% rate increase will be reinvested in the community through the COVID-19 support packages. And council has already launched three phases of support. The first phase includes community support, as well as business support through rebates of some business fees and charges, rent relief for people renting council properties, 
animal registration renewal payment deferrals and a business concierge service. Phase two included financial hardship and payment plans, deferred due dates on rate instalment payments, an interest-free period of up till September 2020, and rebates for eligible rate payers. Phase three includes fast turnaround community support grants. The rate increase will also ensure continued delivery of ongoing services to the community, including essential services such as roads, maternal and child services, library services, sporting ovals, as well as community support services from local school crossing supervisors to senior citizen centres. The budgeted capital works program for 20 to 21 totals 85.925 million, which includes 26.777 million of carryovers. The program is funded by a combination of council cash, grants and contributions, as well as borrowings. Included in the budget is 37.913 million for infrastructure works, and this includes recreation reserves, leisure and community facilities, drains, roads, footpaths and parks, open space and streetscapes. New projects in the Capital Works program total 37.391 million, with major projects including land acquisitions, integrated children's facilities at Timbertop and at Ricks Road in Officer, as well as sporting fields and pavilions. In addition, 43.692 million is budgeted for asset renewal and upgrade projects, including 5.615 million for road renewals, 4.8 million for sealing the hills program and a further 8 million for stage two of the Connect Cadinia Road sealing program. In developing the budget, council has taken a balanced approach to provide quality, cost-effective services to our community while delivering an important and significant forward-thinking capital works program that supports jobs, the economy and the needs of our fast-growing shire now and into the future. I know and understand that for some of our residents, this has been a very difficult period and they are doing it tough. And we recognise our responsibility to provide assistance. If anyone is facing a situation that they need help, I urge them to contact council and talk to the staff. The staff are here to help you and plan, together a plan can be developed that will help you through this difficult time. Thank you, Mayor, and I'll leave it to my seconder to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilmot. I'll go to Councillor Schilling to speak to this item. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Wilmot, for moving what will be the last budget of this term of council. I would argue this is the most significant budget that, as a council team, we have ever worked on. It has to be, had to be adapted to a rapidly changing world where we had the huge responsibility of developing a budget that is compassionate, financially responsible, whilst at the same time will ensure jobs are created, and I believe the budget achieves just that. Six months ago, who would have guessed or predicted that we would be facing a massive health global pandemic? As a council, we've had to respond by providing additional services to support our community, as well as provide vital assistance to those doing it tough. And for those reasons, I'm incredibly proud of the $1.6 million COVID support package, which will provide support to those that need it the most. That also includes a $50 rebate for those residents who hold a valid concession card. Acknowledging just how hard some members of the community have been hit, and there's been repeated references throughout briefings and the discussions about the most vulnerable in the community and those that cannot afford the 2% rate increase, I uh, requested adjustments to the hardship policy to ensure that people doing it tough will receive a 0% rate increase for the 2021 year, on the condition that they're eligible for Council's hardship policy. That means people most in need will get re the relief that they need. And whilst that 2% rate increase will be approximately $26 uh, for the year, as our own uh, modelling shows, for a small number of the community, that additional $26 will mean a great difference. Whilst we're operating in a cash-restricted environment, it's important that continu Council continues with the Capital Works budget, because not only does it create local jobs, it also provides critical infrastructure, which will serve our community for years to come. Because as we know, keeping people healthy and connected is so important for well-being of our community. Over the past four years, I've been proud to serve as a Central Ward Councillor and to see our projects in Central Ward take shape. A number of them have been my councillor aspirations, and it's great to see these projects come online. The $1 million for the My Place facility, 
Our, our current facility at the moment has outgrown itself and there are service providers bashing down the door trying to get in to utilise space. This one million dollar contribution will ensure this space to grow. The Tumuk Reserve upgrade, also a fantastic central ward project. The relocation of the Pakenham Tennis Club we were able to negotiate and I thank Councillor Ryan for her ongoing work to help with that. The planning uh, money for Cadinia Life Expansion, 155000 the $80,000 for disability access and inclusion, another proud achievement of this budget. Also the uh, money um, allocated for the off-leash dog parks which will also benefit our local community. We have to adopt this budget based on the facts that are on the table today. Any other option would have potential catastrophic ramifications for the long-term sustainability of services that we deliver to our community and those people that need it the most. A reminder to the council is that tonight must not be a debate about hypothetical revenue streams that may or may not exist. That would be irresponsible. We owe it to the community to deliver a compassionate yet responsible budget. And I'd like to thank all the council staff and um, councillors around the room for all the hard work, which what will hopefully be um, a budget that as a council we can all be proud of and the last budget of the council term. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Schilling. Well spoken. <clears throat> uh, councillors, do I have any uh, one would like to speak next, please? Councillor Ross. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll, um, I'll foreshadow the following motion if it's defeated the council budget. Uh, the council amends item 6.2.1. Uh, adoption of budget 2022-21 so that the general rate increase for landowners is reduced to zero instead of the reported two. The zero percent increase would have adjustments to the budget for savings and expenditure required. Speaking to this motion about a zero rate increase, um, I must say this is absolutely consistent with what I did back in 2008 when the GFC came. Our rates were going to go up 7.8% and at the time I said they should go up 3 to 4%. Nevertheless, it was knocked down. We still went up 7.8%. It didn't make any difference whether or not the GFC had hit. We sent it through. So this is consistent with what I've always believed in. I've always believed that ratepayers' money is given to council and, and it still remains ratepayers' money. We are only custodians of their money. Uh, during this um, COVID crisis, we need to leave more money in the pockets of residents to pay bills, loss of funds, to spend locally for businesses that are struggling when their rates come in and it isn't the $26, they'll pay far higher rates than that. Also too, it seems interesting that that some people would think it's better to take it out of their pocket but give it back into their other pocket when we know and we've discussed that a lot of people probably under duress won't apply for that because they're under so much duress they'll just pay whatever because because their situation is, is one that they they're really um, in, in a pit at that time I mean when you have a look at it we've discussed this after September when the the job keeper comes off and the job seeker comes down we're going to really find out how hard people are doing and that's when people have to pay their rates or their installments I must say that a zero increase isn't a foreign thing we've got all the councils in Western Australia that have got a rate rate freeze every single council the city of Melbourne Karangamite Wodonga Ballarat Wellington Moyne the city of Adelaide the city of Hobart uh, uh, Colac Otway, 0.5 of a percent. Uh, I must say that, um, that during this exceptional historical time, it requires historical measures and support for our residents. I will just say it again that I believe that this um, zero rate increase freeze is such a such a move. Uh, it's been pointed out that you know 1.6 million dollars wouldn't come our way. Well, $1.6 million compared to the $3 to $5 million we get every year from the Growing Suburbs Fund that is never, ever budgeted because you can't budget for something that you haven't received when you apply for it. It must come in first. Easily covers the $1.6 million. But some people have, have a different complex on this. They would rather take the $1.6 off the residents and then give it back. My attitude is we keep it in their pockets so therefore they can work out what they do with it and that way everybody is guaranteed of the reduction even if you can't put it in because you're so overwhelmed you will get that reduction so this is one way to make sure everybody gets a zero rate freeze. I thank you Mr Mayor. 
Thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, do I have any other council like to speak? Councillor um, Councillor Ryan. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, looking through the the budget, I do have some concerns, and they're only my concerns, no one else's concerns. We all have different ways of looking at our budget, and we all believe that um, the information we receive back from our, our residents is, is true to fact, and we follow through with that as councillors. We're all very passionate about the, bad, the budget and what we've, what we've been doing. We've all worked hard on the budget. Um, it just doesn't seem like nearly four years that um, our term is nearly up and this is our last budget. So um, it's great to see one, one aspiration that I had been pushing since um, 2009, a park had not had any play equipment. And to see families create um, go-karts and, and other things going down a footpath because there was nothing else to do um, for the children. So it was either play ball or get the dog to chase the ball or um, go-karting and probably injure yourself. So it was great to see one of my aspirations that this park finally has their, their play equipment and seeing them recently, um, since they've been allowed to be on, on um, play equipment, the enjoyment from these families and children and going and asking them how they felt about it, um, having that equipment there and, and what it meant to them. And um, the feedback was absolutely wonderful and it makes me feel so proud that something so important that I finally did get through, um, through the um, council. And um, so that was one of my aspirations. Um, and, and some of the other aspirations um, with the budget that we, we've worked on over, over the years um, is, you know, the senior citizens. They got new carpet and, and painting um, inside, which was badly needed. Um, there were planters um, created in the main street and that came from one of our, our residents that um, wanted um, some plants in and beautify our main street in Pakenham. Uh, so that was really, really great. So as Councillor Schilling mentioned, um, some of the other things that came from um, within our, our central ward and, um, and central ward councils have worked pretty hard on, on, on the process and IYU Reserve, you know, we're proud to see that that's up and running and, and the community's really thoroughly enjoying that and um, it's wonderful to see so many people again, families, um, just participating in, in a family environment. Um, and Tumac Reserve, the Northern Pavilion, that's been a long time coming and to see that happening, um, but, you know, unfortunately it won't be in our term, but, uh, um, you know, if we're lucky, <laughs> we might see it in our term if we're lucky enough to get in next time. Uh, so we've also got... Um, just bear with me. We also had the, the um, Tumut Creek um, pedestrian uh, bridge on the north and south. The community are absolutely over the moon about that. So um, hard working in pushing very, very hard and advocating for that, and it was finally done. So we have a lot more people, again, uh, communicating and socialising. And it's all about socialising and keeping fit and um, with their mental health and wellbeing. I do have some concerns, though, with the budget. Can Councillor Ryan, I'll just say you, you've... You have, four, you have 40 seconds over your three-minute okay. allocation right. of talking. Just, just to let you know, if you want to finish up in the next 15, 20 seconds, then that's fine. But I um, will. I will. Um, just you, basically, you, 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 I you, will... Could I, Mr Mayor, can I please move a motion to extend the time for Councillor Ryan by two minutes, please? I'd need a seconder and Councillor to vote on it. I, I say, sorry, Colin. That's, uh, I don't think that's a point of order to, to have. We, we can put it forward. Uh, do we have a seconder for that motion to extend the time for Councillor Owen? Councillor Owen, OK. All, all those in favour? Carried. Go for it. Thank you, Councillor. So much appreciated. It's only a small amount from the end there. Um, I won't be supporting the 2% um, rate increase, and these are my reasons why. I will be supporting a zero um, rate increase. 
Coming into council, that was one of my priorities, uh, was the struggling ratepayers. That was part of the reason that I ran for council. I know that at times it's really tough. I feel it. I get it. And I'm, a, I'm with the residents and, and um, will do whatever I can to advocate on their behalf. Our seniors are going to be the biggest ones that are going to struggle, especially with the COVID as well. 80% of our rate revenue comes from Central Ward and a lot of those are from seniors um, that are homeowners. We also have people that have lost their jobs recently and also uh, people that are on benefits. So it may be finding an extra $50 um, a year or $100 a year, whatever that might be within the budget. But if we're talking about an extra $26, that could mean someone's medication, that could mean someone's heating, that could mean someone's food on the table. It's a matter of finding that money before they have to pay. Even though we've put uh, some really good um, projects in place um, to help with discounts um, for our residents, I just feel very strongly in reference to, and businesses as well, that um, I will be um, supporting a zero rate um, increase. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Um, any other councillors would like to speak this up? Uh, Councillor Moore, you got in first. Okay. Go for it. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mayor. And thank you, Councillors, um, for the um, motion moved, uh, the second, uh, very well spoken, and uh, you did an excellent job. And the foreshadowed uh, motion, of course, from Councillor Ross. Um, oh, very interesting. Um, where do I start? Okay, um, I'm, go I'm going to support the 2% the rise, and I can tell you definitely, um, without a doubt. I remember coming on council all those years back, um, and there were, there were rises of 7 to 8%. This, this rise is, is, is not much. It is very minimal. I think it's very responsible, and, and, a, and a great balance of a... Of a, of a of a budget. <clears throat> we worked we worked very well together as councillors. I congratulate you for what we respect for one another and what we put up. We all agree or disagree and we can agree to dis disagree in this in this chamber. And I think um, I think we've we've come to a point now where we need to be with this budget. We're talking about well this started back in December we we started discussing this budget. Now we're talking about changing it and bringing it back down to something that, that we've already agreed to, amounts and figures. I, I just don't understand, Mr Mayor, I'm sorry, um, that, that we're doing this now. And in the, we've done all this hard work, the, the staff um, and, and the CEO and us councils working together, uh, led by the Mayor, um, to get it to this point so we can give to our community what they need to have. Now, you mightn't think... You might think it increases, everyone says it increases an increase, I know. And, and I know this $26 amount has been floated around a little bit more. Some, some people it would be less. Look, okay, and it's $26 per annum, let me explain. It's not $26. If you add it over and divide it up with a mathematical equation, if you like, over 12 months, <clears throat> if you do the figures, you're under 50 cents per week. And what you will get back for that to the, to the community in infrastructure and the things that, the things that um, you're talking about at Central Ward where you ga gain these, um, all these um, fantastic uh, results, these, these great results for your community, they won't be there. You won't have them, like those parks with, with, um, with the playgrounds and those type of things. We, we won't be able to do those sort of things. So for the small amount that we're talking about, and it's a very minimal amount we're talking about here, when you talk about a rise, no one wants to rise on anything. But what business in the world could, could have a business that could rise only 2% and survive? So really, honestly, I, I, um, <clears throat> I can't believe that we're having this discussion about that now when we've done a lot of figures, we've done a lot of hard work to get this down to a balanced a balance budget as we have now. So like I say, um, way back, this, 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 is a, this is what I call a small responsible rise in, in a business that, that is needed to, um, to, to give the infrastructure and the services to our community. And without that, th then we'll, have, we'll be back to square one. And we're going to give a, give a budget to a new council, possibly all new councils it could be, 
we're going to give them something they can't work with and won't be able to do anything with them and we're going to leave them with that. What sort of responsible people are we as councillors to give them that sort of, um, uh, without having the benefits to, to have that budget as being responsible? So that's, that's my view and I'm going to stick with it. And um, so I think, um, I think it's responsible to, um, because we've done the hard work to get it to where it is. And we've, we've cut corners. We've actually cut corners to get where we are. So, so to take it any slimmer than that is just totally irresponsible. So, Mr Mayor, I'm sorry, but I'll be sticking with the budget as, as moved by Councillor Wilmot and as seconded by Councillor Schilling. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Um, I'll go to Councillor Owen to speak. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you all councillors for speaking. Um, I will be supporting uh, the budget as, as moved by Councillor Wilmot. Um, I just want to reiterate the comments of uh, Councillor Wilmot and Councillor Schilling. Uh, you, you both talked about the support packages, the hardship policies, and I remind people, um, if you are struggling uh, to pay your, your rates, please refer to those options to you, and thank you for outlining it. It's really important that this council is committed to helping those uh, in need uh, during this very challenging time. Um, you're right, uh, Councillor Moore, we started this budget process a long time ago and I do thank uh, obviously the officers and the councillors for your commitment through this process. Um, it's been a moving feast as, as we've gone through this, this crisis. Um, you know, we've, we've had to find over, you know, from where we started, you know, almost getting to that draft budget stage, we had to find, you know, over $9 million worth of savings because of the expected uh, decrease in revenue that this council is, is budgeting for. So, you know, that, that was hard for some councillors because, you know, we've all got aspirations and, you know, that there's, there's projects that I was really hoping for this budget to really deliver in this term of uh, this, this, the last year of this term. And some of these projects were the O'Neill Rec Reserve, uh, the Beacon Sealed Streetscape, uh, those uh, projects have been penciled in for a long, long time, but because of, you know, the budget had to, you know, be tightened and, and savings uh, got, uh, those projects have been, I'm hoping, uh, just delayed a year and hopefully the new council uh, will commit to those, those, those projects. Um, but I'm really pleased um, and page 145 of the budget papers um, talk about the recent changes since the, um, the submission period. And I'm really pleased um, that we're gonna see some projects that have been, once again, aspirations. For instance, uh, the Upper Beaconsfield Rec Reserve. Uh, anyone who knows that reserve, it, it's definitely tired. The change rooms are very tired. They need to be upgraded. They're not suitable for female participants, not suitable for, for young participants. So this budget has increased this, this um, motion will increase the allocation to uh, basically $1.1 million for that uh, change room upgrade. There's additional money there also for, um, for the, uh, the master plan, for the building site works. This is, in my opinion, going to be just a uh, stage one of an overdevelopment uh, development there for a number of years. Um, we're committing to our playgrounds. We talk about playgrounds. You know, I love our playground um, upgrades. We've got our major roadworks happening across the Shire. Uh, we know that roads is a problem, and, and when we've um, gone out to the community, they're screaming, we need to improve our roads. So we've got a massive multi-million dollar roads package to, uh, rolling out the ceiling and the hills, ceiling uh, of other roads around the Shire. Um, these are really important. Cock two cot cottages. There was a submission uh, in relation to the budget. Uh, I know uh, that those that facility in Cockatoo is desperate need for an upgrade. So this budget will deliver it. Um, so I'll, I can go on and on, but I know time is of the essence. Uh, Princess Highway intersections. You know, this council is rolling out those intersection upgrades with the help of federal government. Really important. We need to keep going with that. Uh, recreation reserve uh, funding officer, uh, rec reserve in relation to sewerage. That, that, that facility is in the middle of officer and still doesn't have access to sewerage. It's really important we connect that facility up to uh, sewerage and, and get away from the septic tanks. Uh, very important, lighting there, etc., etc. So I support this budget because I support the much needed capital works that needs to occur um, for our community. It has been a tough time 
but these things that we're delivering for our community will help rebuild our community in relation to you know, providing that support to our residents, playgrounds and disability upgrades and so forth like that. Um, we need to keep doing this sort of work, um, provide those jobs for um, local residents and, and I support this budget during these difficult times. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, I'll add a couple of words before I go back to uh, Councillor Wilmot to summarise. Um, I, I too support the budget as um, as it has been withdrawn by Councillor Wilmot and as uh, councillors, you can see it in front of your uh, your papers there. Um, it's been, I'm just going to repeat myself a little bit here, but this has been a very tight, a very well thought effort that's gone in from staff, from councillors. We've never had to do a budget like this before. Uh, we've never had to come back to the drawing board, you know, um, two thirds of the way into it and say, hey, guess what? We've got a pandemic going on here. We've got to try and, uh, we've got to try and adjust because we don't know what's coming around the corner. It's been rightly mentioned that a lot of people are, are having a hard time. Of, it's going to be difficult financial times. We're, we're talking about that coming up. Uh, and, you know, I believe this budget addresses that well because the people that we have a good hardship policy in place, and I'll reiterate that sentiments that have been passed already, that anyone that is finding hardship towards paying their rates, uh, get in touch with the council and we will help you to get through this. Um, people that can't afford to pay their rates will not be getting kicked out of their house. They will, you know, we have a robust hardship policy. And part of the way that we can cushion the, um, you know, we can cushion the disastrous effect this is going to have on some residents is by adopting the budget as it is to meet the needs of the community, of the sporting clubs, of the infrastructure, such as the roads package, which is so long in the making. People have been complaining about the unsealed road network. We've, you know, we've put more effort in the last couple of years towards developing a plan and a project along with the federal funding to deliver this, uh, to deliver some real notable change with that. Uh, we've got some great projects coming up. As uh, councillors have already mentioned, I won't go over them again. I will also mention that unfortunately there is some things that we've had to postpone until later years because we've had to find a number of savings in um, our operational budget as well, we've found a number of savings over the last three or four months, which I'm very impressed with from council officers, so thank you. And um, community, I just ask the community to come along this journey with us. We've had, you know, we've had feedback to this budget. We've been out there talking with community members like, you know, like never before because people are focused on what the future is going to look like. And they're looking to us as their community leaders to help deliver them through this and to get through to the other side. I believe this budget's going to do that to the best of our ability that we've um, that we've developed it. So I uh, look forward to. I thank everyone else that is also supporting this budget. I agree. I think this budget is the best pathway forward for us as an organisation and for our community. Uh, so thank you, councillors. I'll, I'll now go back to Council Wilmot to summarise. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, councillors, for your comments. The budget for the 2020 to 20 21 financial year has been prepared to align with the vision in the council plan. It seeks to maintain and improve services and infrastructure, as well as deliver projects and services that are valued by our community. It also provides a balance between maintaining essential services and providing some relief for our community and businesses in light of the severe social and economic impacts of COVID-19. The finance team and the senior leadership team have kept all councillors well informed of the changing situation through our weekly briefing updates, and many scenarios have been investigated and discussed, including the potential of delaying the budget and the implications and problems associated with that action. We've also discussed for several weeks the impact of a 0% rate increase would have, not just on this budget, but the accumulative effect on future budgets. We looked at different areas of expenditure that could be cut to accommodate the decrease in revenue a 0% increase would bring. We explored the possible capital works projects that could be delayed or the services that could be reduced. This was a really robust and thorough process and I thank the staff for their ongoing work in this rapidly changing and challenging environment. We've all had to make our own decisions on what is and what isn't acceptable not only for the current residents, but what is responsible decision for our future residents? 
These decisions have not been easy for anyone, but our roles as councillors is to think beyond what's happening now, beyond what's happening in, in the election in October and if our decisions will be popular or not. Our role is to ensure our communities continue to receive the services, the support and the infrastructure they need now and in the future. And this will continue to make Cadinia the best possible place to live, work and raise a family. In closing, I'd like to thank the CEO and her senior leadership team for their work and how adaptable they have been in making changes to this situation keeps unfolding. I'd particularly like to thank Scott Moore and his finance team. I can only imagine how exhausted these guys must be having prepared a budget a few months ago and now almost having to redo a complete budget over the last couple of months. I hope there will be an opportunity for them to relax for a while once this budget is adopted tonight. But the true impact of COVID-19 on our budget won't really be known for some months and I'm sure that Scott and his team will be keeping a very close eye on it. Councillors, I ask for your support tonight in adopting the budget for the 2020 to 21 period of the Council Plan and the Council Plan actions. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Wilmer. Uh, Councillors, I'll now put this to a vote. vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. Can I please ask for a division, Mr Mayor? Uh, yes, you may, Councillor Russ. Uh, all those in favour, please stand. It's Councillor Wilmot, Councillor Schilling, Councillor Moore, Councillor Owen and Councillor Springfield. Uh, please sit. Uh, and all those against, please stand. Councillor Ross and Councillor Ryan, uh, please sit. Thank you, Councillors. Reports or minutes of committees. Um, I note that reports from various committees have been received in addition to the minutes of recent council briefing sessions and these are available if councillors wish to view them. Uh, councillors, do you have any reports um, you wish to report on or any matters you wish to report on? All right. Councillors, there being none, we'll uh, move forward to a presentation of petitions. Uh, councillors, are there any petitions that you would like to present? Excuse me, Mr Mayor. Um, I think there's another item, uh, the adoption of the council plan and council actions we need to deal with. Was it all in one, sorry? Sorry, Mayor. Uh, sorry, yeah. I just was reading from the report. Okay, okay, sorry. No, that's okay, Councillor Owen, thank you. Keep me on my toes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we, we, we stuck those two together just to, uh, as, uh, as one thing. Yep. <clears throat> Um, all right, I'll go back. Uh, presentations of petitions. I thought you had a good petition, nice juicy petition to print to put forward then, but n n n no, no presentation of petitions. Thank you, councillors. Uh, notices of motion. Uh, Councillor Ross, uh, you have lodged a notice of motion. Uh, do you wish to move your motion? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Please continue, Councillor Ross. Is that okay? No worries. I move that Council brings back to the July Council meeting a report that has the attendance records of all the Cardinia Shire Councillors for the current term 2016 to present. This report will not be confidential and needs to be included in the Council meeting papers. These attendance records for the complete transparency will include attendance record for general council meetings, town, plans on, town planning meetings, special council meetings, and attendance at council briefings. It will have, it will have attend apologies or no response included. They have, they, this will have each individual councillor records year by year and totals within uh, thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, do I have a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Ryan. Um, I'll go back to Councillor Ross to speak to this item. Sorry, don't, don't go too long. Anyway, look, this, this motion comes down to transparency on uh, attendance numbers, and it comes down to attendance numbers for our general council meetings, our special council meetings, our town planning meetings, and our councillor briefings. Um, we don't have, in a total amount, a, um, a list of these 
aggregated on our council website. It's not in our annual report. And media, to get this information, has to request it or go through some of the records, which I've, I've done. Other councils, like Frankston City Council, you can go on their website and find every attendance back to 214. Uh, you can go onto the Moreland City Council, and they've got the general council meetings, they've got council briefings, and they've got other council meetings, like um, special council meetings on theirs, all the way back for years. You've got uh, Greater Danning on council, which has got council meetings and council briefings for everybody on it. Um, I must say, uh, during our last term on council, in, um, at, towards the end of it, on, on the 28th of the 7th, 2016, there was an article in the Pakenham Gazette that said, Council Clean Up. And it's interesting, it said uh, about reforms to improve council transparency. And I note that Councillor Schilling printed in his Facebook post at the time when he was running at a candidate. He actually published that and he had the, the amount there with the, the things and, and he, you, and he um, saw it fit to put that information on his post when he was running for council, that that was an interesting thing that people would like to know about that. And the local paper does do this on a common basis. They actually look into what the council numbers are. So on a transparency level, best practice is that we have these things and people don't have to go through uh, freedom of information to find them or spend hours getting them. Um, I know that um, in some other councils in New South Wales, they have it in Queensland, they have it as well. They have it in their annual reports, they have it on their website and they update it weekly. And they even, some councils even put the different committees that you put your hand up for at the end of the year and they put down how many times you've attended. So if I'm at the Metro Waste or some of those things, it would have written down how many different events they're on, how many I attended, how many I was an apology for or I didn't respond to. So I see this as um, a, um, something that the residents would find extremely interesting. Um, and I think it's an absolute must. I mean, if, if you're going to vote for councillors at a council election, one of the most important things you can do is attend on behalf of them. And I just could not believe why anybody would not support having an attendance connected to our, our online. So I've asked for a report to come back to council at the next council meeting that goes over this term of council and having those attendance for each and every individual councillor on that basis. Anyway, I put it to the floor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ross. I'll, I'll go to Councillor Ryan to speak to this item. Thank you, through you, Meg. Um, I'm in support of uh, Councillor Ross's uh, notice of motion in reference to um, having this report done uh, that will be public. I think it's really important. I mean, a lot of committees I go to, we have the minutes and it just indicates who's there, who's not. Um, and, it, and it's just really always important that, you know, um, we can acknowledge when someone is not well, um, we can acknowledge that, you know, they, they haven't been well. And, and it gives everyone the, the opportunity to um, send you know, um, well, I'm sorry you're sick. I'm sorry that, you know, is there anything I can do? So it's a bit of support that comes behind that transparency. Um, and it is about transparency within council. And a lot of our residents are requesting, um, you know, the transparency. We're hearing it continually in every angle that we're working within, within council. I think, you know, just the fact that if residents are requesting it and other committees and other organisations have that, then um, I can't see um, a problem with our transparency. I think it only shows us as good councillors. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ryan. Uh, Councillor Schilling, I'll go to you to speak to this item. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you, Councillor Ross, for bringing this to Council. And through conversations that we've had, you know I'm a big um, supporter of um, enhancing transparency. And I also appreciate that you've um, been able to look back on my social media for, the, for four years. And yes, I actually remember doing that as well. And um, I, I support us being more transparency. Because after all, um, we've been elected by our local residents to represent their interest um, to the Shire. And not only that, our allowances are paid through, our, through rates, which residents also um, also pay. 
So this council has come a long way since we were elected in 2016. Our meetings are now streamed live and made available through mainstream media channels, which is compared to the old practice of uh, bearing a rickety old podcast in the back end of the council website and saying, hey, we're transparent. Um, I'm in full support of having meeting attendance being made available to the public, including briefings. Um, and, and some will say, once again, that publicly um, people can access that information already, but I'd like to just bring everyone's attention back to the old podcast situation where we are um, saying, hey, it's available if you really dig and look and have 10 hours to look. Um, so I agree. I certainly agree that a KPI to us being effective as councillors is how often we attend meetings. I would not um, deny that. However, I, I do have a problem with this specific wording of the motion. Everything that Councillor Ross has outlined tonight um, in his speaking points, if it was in the notice of motion, I would be able to support. But the actual notice of motion itself doesn't talk about long-term change to Council's current practice. Um, it's asking for a singular report. In a lot of ways, I would like to be able to see a notice of motion that had some more teeth. Um, it's, a little, it's a little bit clumsy um, from my viewing of it. Um, providing a councillor report at a January meeting doesn't enhance transparency um, other than giving us a written copy of the information. It's almost like the podcast situation where it's back in a website somewhere. So I'd like to be able to see this beefed up before I could support it because at the moment it's just asking for a report and it doesn't create measurable change and best practice change as a, as a council. And I'm a, I guess I'm a little bit I'm disappointed in a sense because everything that Councillor Ross spoke about in his opening remarks is what I've written here as to what I'd like to see in a notice of motion and it's about um, publishing meeting attendance on the website 100%. I think that should definitely happen. I definitely think that it should be in the annual report. I look back at the annual report and um, it's a percentage as a council and that's not on. Our attendance should be in it. Um, I even support the idea of having our briefings updated and I'd be happy to discuss committee reports. But that's not listed in this notice of motion. It's just asking for a report that will be stored online, brought up at a meeting and we'll be able to use it and wave it around and say, hey, I've been to council every day, you haven't, whatever. I don't think it creates um, any organisational change that will enhance long-term transparency. Um, I would be very happy to support an updated motion that had measurable outcomes in it, but just asking for the single report in July is something that unfortunately I won't be able to support tonight. I would like to see some more actions as part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Schilling. Um, do I have any other councillor like to speak? Councillor Moore. Thank, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, well said, Councillor Schilling. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, look, <clears throat> let's, let's put it this way. We're, we're put in those positions of trust, aren't we? We're, we're actually being elected to our positions here as a matter of trust. And I, I find this really a little bit of mischief making, this, this notice of motion, must I say. Um, to, to have a single report, as Councillor Schilling said, which is correct, what is, what, what is going, what, what's the result? What are we going to get out of that? It's going to be a lot of work for our, um, our staff to, to dig back right through all this information and what is it going to gain? I, I, I don't know what the gains are. We talk about 0% and 2% and whatever. I'm looking for a gain in this where, where I can see it. And look, when it gets, comes down to what other councils do and what they do in in New South Wales and Tasmania and West Australia, whatever, I don't care. It's not, not, it's not our, our choice to so follow someone else. We're not followers. We're, we're the leaders in our group, aren't we? So therefore, I don't believe in following. We, just because someone else does it, it doesn't mean that we have to do that. But I, I can understand, I can see the accountability um, in respects to uh, Councillor Ross's idea. I think it's something that could put, put in the future that we could maybe from here on have some register, but I think to go back, I'm not even sure whether we would have that information in our hands to do that. We would have to be going back through something and guessing, guessing I say. Is that a full report as what, what we'd want to have? No, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be accurate. So I, I, honestly, I can't support this at all. I, I really can't see the reason for just doing a single report to spend a lot of time on doing something just to maybe point out that someone hasn't been to a meeting or been involved in, in something. Okay, how many people, how many um, residents, I ask you, out there in resident land, 
would, would really want to know that. They, they see what their councillors do. The ones that really know, know what their councillors do. And I can tell you in the future, if they're single council awards, they're going to know what they do because they're going to be accountable from there on. So what, what that report will do from here on, I don't know because the proof will be in the pudding, as my mother used to say. That's what it's going to be. That'll be showing the council will be out there doing in those single wards and, and they'll be identified in those areas. And, and if they're not attending and whatever, well, so be it. They're, they're going to show up as they, as they are. So to use it as a... Use this notice of motion as, as a, a voting weapon um, against one council to another, which, which could possibly be the case if you want to look at it that way. That's how I would see it as, as a resident. Um, I can't see the value in doing it, Mr Mayor. I'm sorry, councillors, but um, I, I still feel as if um, we're put in this place of trust um, with all the things that we do, and uh, I, I can't see how we can be made pulled in to be accountable. I mean, uh, we're accountable for actions, and I think we show that. I haven't seen much uh, other than that before, so um, I'm sorry I won't be supporting this notice of motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Moore. Um, any other councillors? Uh, Councillor Owen. Thank you, Mayor, and I appreciate all the comments from all councillors. Um, uh, councillors work very hard, in, in my opinion, what I see, and uh, their attendance at a meeting is one element. You know, whether a councillor responds to phone calls, returns phone calls, emails, etc., all you know, weighs up to the fact of whether a councillor is effective and, and doing their job properly. Um, when I, uh, I often ask for reports, and I don't think it hurts to ask for a report. Um, a report is often the start of that conversation. You know, a report could go up and then there could be certain uh, uh, additions to that report a councillors might move. Um, and uh, I've seen that done effectively um, uh, at other occasions. Um, with COVID-19, I think we have to look outside the square. In relation to briefings, I appreciate meetings and attendance, but, you know, the world has changed. We, as an organisation, as a council, I think we've coped very well um, through the leadership of the CEO, how we uh, continue to meet, you know, in different forums you know, through this crisis. And I think this council needs to be open, you know, we want councillors that come from a different back, you know, all, all sorts of background and family you know, positions. You know, count some councillors that are working full time or part time or retired or got you know five kids and young children. Um, so I think you know, hopefully the new council will look at ways to, if a councillor cannot attend um, a briefing. And I appreciate a meeting as a different scenario, but you know I think we need to in, you know consider that in the future. You know, you know if you can't get out of work but you can you know, get into a Skype meeting, I think that's really important. So um, I am going to support you, Councillor Ross, in, in your request for a report, and that's what it is—a request for a report. And we can, as councillors, do you know assess that report and see whether we, we like it, whether we do any changes, whether we make further. Um, commitments to ongoing change and transparency. So I support this motion for a report at this stage. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Um, any other councillor? Councillor Wilmot. Thank you, Mayor. And I share the opinion of Councillor Moore and Councillor Schilling on this. Um, I'm all for transparency and accountability. And oh, goodness knows I've moved motions before to tighten up policies and uh, entitlements and claim forms and all the rest of it trying to make councillors more accountable for their actions. So I don't have an issue with that. But as Councillor Moore mentioned, this is almost a bit mischievous, this request for a report. And I do question the timing of this request. It's only a couple of months now before an election happens. So this report will come out two months before an election. So how is the information in this report going to be used? Because it's only a report in a council document in an agenda. It's not available on the website for anybody. They will have to go to the agenda to read the report. They can't just go and click under councillors and councils, the mayor and under our profile information to see what sort of attendance rate we've got. They will have to know about the report to then go and look for it. So I do question why this report has suddenly come up. Um, if it was a report Again, asking for it to be a regular feature on our website, just the same as our expense claims and travel claims are, that would be a different thing. 
but it's not. This is purely a report that's going to be buried in a council briefing uh, meeting agenda. And if people and residents won't know about it, because let's face it, there isn't really that many residents out there that uh, bother to look at our agendas or tune into a meeting. It's a small number of people, not many. So I don't believe that this is something that will increase our transparency or our accountability at this point. If there was more work done to it, then maybe the next council will move forward and do exactly what's being requested. But this, this notice of motion doesn't, doesn't cover that, so I won't be supporting it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Wilmot. Um, this has been an in interesting conversation. Um, just to note, councillors, uh, this is one topic we haven't discussed at length, you know, previously, the City Council's point of view, so it was really interesting to hear uh, the point of views come across from this. Um, and look, I have to say, Councillor Schilling, I think you summarised it very well when you spoke earlier, um, in that it has a lot of positives to this, but it could be evolved to be even more long-reaching, where, where it's something, something that actually was noted for the record as council moves forward, and I think it would be a decision for the new council when it comes on board, perhaps. Um, it could be a decision for this old council beforehand. But, um, you know, we could have this moving forward. I think that would be a positive where, you know, we had a record of attendance and we had a record that we decided if we all chose in our wisdom that, that we have that for transparency moving forward under, you know, and to be easily reported on, to be easily um, viewed by members of the public and such. So, um, so Councillor Sterling, I, I have to admit at the start, I was in a grant, so that, that I think this report would be fine, but I think you've brought up a valid point that we should um, come back to this with a little bit more robustness around it and something that has, that moves into the future of what we're looking at reporting on in the future rather than talking about what's happened in the past so much something that encompasses the future as well i think would be more positive um i'll, I'll leave it at that um thank you councillors and i'll go back to councillor ross to summarize thank you mr mayor i think um councillor owen described it exactly i know councillor owen in the past has moved reports so that we can get recommendations out of them and out of that so you do something initially to get some data and information, and then you get you beef it up later. And in consideration of future councils, I didn't put in a whole lot for them to be curtailed to. I put in this motion so that people could come up with that, we'd have some recommendations, and then a future council could decide on their transparency how this would work. I must say it's very interesting that Councillor Wilmot uh, when she first was elected on council, one of her major things was transparency. And she has done everything in her power to do transparency. But this is really interesting because, you know, if you've got nothing to hide, hide nothing. And I find it amazing that this piece of transparency will not come forward. And if Excuse she votes, me, Mayor, and if she I votes against this tonight... Point of order, please. Uh, uh, point of order, yes. Yeah, yes, I, I'd just like to clarify, is Councillor Ross trying to make some assertion that I've got something to hide? Uh, Point of order, Councillor Ross, is that, is that the assertion you were trying to make? What I'm saying is, if so, we don't vote for this tonight, nothing will be transparent. So just, just to go back, so, so Councillor Ross, you're, 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 you're saying that, you're, you're, you're just assuming that you don't think that Councillor Wilmot has something to hide. She won't support it. No, no, but she just said, she, the point That's of motion, sorry, the point of order was that she, she felt you were you were alluding to the fact that she had something to hide. I'm just getting a clarification for you to either say yes is, or no. What I'm saying is that if people don't vote for this tonight, that they are voting to show nothing, to hide these, this information. It will be hidden and it will not come out. That is what they are voting for. Excuse okay. me. Okay. I will uh, Council Wilma, please. You, you can, you, yes, you bring it up again, please. Excuse me. Councillor Ross, in my speech, I said I am all for transparency and accountability, and my track record shows that. This isn't transparent. This isn't going on the website as a clear okay. and open report. This is going to be a report that is buried in a councillor agenda somewhere. I have nothing to hide, nothing at all. I'm quite proud of the job that I've done as a councillor and of my attendance rate. Is it 100%? No. Okay. But nobody's is. So, so I re really, uh, really think you're councillors, disrespectful councillors, to assert... So, that sorry to jump in. I'm, I'm going I'm to come back to the point of order. And the point of order that Councillor Wilmot brought up was that uh, she felt Councillor Russ was alluding to something. And then just the point of order. But Councillor Russ, just, just that question. Were you alluding that Councillor Wilmot specifically has something to hide or not? What I was getting to was... All right, now that's, that's, that's it. You know, if you're not going to answer the question, that's okay. It's a simple yes or no question. 
and which was the point I've of what she brought the up. Question. No, you, you haven't said yes or no, mate. So you haven't answered. But that's okay. Oh, you've answered the question. We, we're going to we conclude the discussions around this, and we'll now put this to a vote. So, 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 so you were going to stop me from summing up because someone had a point of order, and you're not going to let me finish. Is that correct, mate? I asked you ten times to, to, to that answer that point no, of order, no, and you refused no, I to. So I am. So I am. I am going to hit my hammer order. and say you didn't answer it because I I asked you the question ten times. You wouldn't tell me yes or no. It's I'll pretty put simple. A point of order against the mayor then the mayor is shutting down this discussion and my and I've never seen this ever happen before that someone shuts down someone because someone brings up a point of order I answer the question <sighs> you shut it down and you say you're going to go it's to a vote you do, to answer anyway it's your order. choice Mr Mayor if you want to shut it down it's all recorded so you do what you want uh, councillors I'll, I'll please give me a moment to, to deliberate with the CEO Let me, let me go back for a second. Uh, Councillor Wilmot, can you please uh, tell me again the point of order you would like me to rule on? Yes, ma'am. I feel that Councillor uh, Ross, in his words, he talked about the fact that previously I had moved um, the, my transparency records and so forth, um, but by not voting for his motion tonight was by hiding so that I had something to hide, and that is incorrect. I have nothing to hide. Uh, th thank you, Councillor Wilmot. Look, I will rule in uh, Councillor Ross's favour and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he was not specifically trying to say that you had something to hide. Um, and look, and, and though Councillor Ross didn't answer that question specifically, I'll, I will give him the benefit of the doubt that he wasn't uh, putting that disparity. But I understand your concern that that was an accusation. Uh, Councillor Ross, can, you may continue to summarise your topic. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, I'd just like to also comment about uh, Councillor Schilling who raised the fact about uh, he would support it only if it was beefed up further. I believe this is the beginning of beefing something up further, but what often happens is if you put up a motion that has too much content in it, it gives too many opportunities to knock it back because you might say, well, I don't agree with beefing it up in the future for a new council, but I would agree with this first step, which is the report coming back. So therefore, that's why I have issued it in the manner I have. So then we get this initial thing and then we decide what we might do ourselves or leave to another council to do. That's why I left it at where it was. And it wasn't beefed up because I didn't want to have that that situation in future. Anyway, I know the paper will come after, after and discuss this, whether it's whether we have a report that's done, they've done it in the past, they put it up every single time. So rather than them go through that manner, um, I thought it would be better that it came from us because we have to take the minutes for all these things. Where three councillors are gathered, you must take the minutes and it's in the act. So it's not like we don't have this information. We do have this information and, oh, sorry. And it's, and it's in there. Uh, so anyway, I would implore my fellow councillors to, to go to this level of transparency. Other councils do it. I don't know why we don't do it. But anyway, that's a thing that we can decide upon in the future. But this is the beginning of it. So I just put that forward. And thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, we're just going to take a pause for a moment because we're, we're having some audio dif difficulties and we're not sure if it's coming through. Our, um, we're just checking to make sure this is coming through the, um, through the online streaming. Uh, yes, we're good to go. We get, we've got the tech guys give us the double thumbs up, so it must be sounding groovy, right? Uh, mm. um, all right, councillors, uh, I will now put this to a vote. Uh, all those in favour, please raise your hands. Uh, all those against, please raise your hands. Uh, I declare that motion... And can I call for a division, please? Lost. Um, so, okay, we've got a double division being called. Um, all those in favour, please stand up. Councillor Ross, Councillor Ryan and Councillor Owen, uh, you may please sit down. Um, all those against, please stand up. Councillor Wilmot, Councillor Schilling, Councillor Moore and Councillor Springfield, uh, you may sit down. Uh, thank you, councillors. Um, 
that, dis that concludes discussion of the items withdrawn. Can I have a motion, please, to adopt the recommendations for the balance of the items listed? Uh, Councillor Moore, and can I have a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Ryan. All these in favour? I declare that carried. Thank you, councillors. Mm. Councillors, that concludes tonight's proceedings. Uh, my, may I have a motion, please, to now open the meeting? Uh, moved by Councillor Moore and seconded by Councillor Ross. All these in favour? I declare carried. <clears throat> Thank you all for your attendance, and I declare the meeting closed.